you so much for being with us today. We're in Isaiah chapter 60, and we're going to look at a couple of verses. Uh, it starts off with, Arise, shine, for your light has come. Hallelujah. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you, for darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Talk to us a little bit about that. Well, this is the interplay of light and dark that, um, that God has been talking about through, through his, through, in, in the way that he's been teaching us. Um, I think, personally, that the light is the second most important attribute of God. His presence in the Son, the Father, and the Holy Spirit is the primary one that Scripture is talking about. But the second, the, the one that is closest to that is light. And the reason it's light is because the true light of the universe emanates from his body. And uh, the sun and the moon have light, but they're only a facsimile his light. So when it talks about the darkness shall cover the earth, uh, it does and it will and it is doing it right now. But in everything that we've been talking about in the last two or three YouTubes, it is to be aware of the light. Jesus is the light of the world and that's just not a, a sentence for our existence. He is the light of the universe. Um, it's no mistake that his first words of creation were, were, let there be light. Everything that we would ever need to know about the Father was in the light that emanated from that word. Right. So if you're living in a time where darkness seems to prevail, and I think we are. I think yes. we're living in a time where uh, it's, it's just really difficult uh, to hear this word, his glory will appear and his light will shine and nations will come to the light. Uh, there's, there's always a place for hope in the midst of if difficult and, and painful and confusing times. Yesterday, my, my prayer time was, uh, God, I'm confused. There is so much that's going on in this world, I am confused. Now, one of the things I could do was to say, have mercy. Have mercy on me, have mercy on us. I don't have the answers, but God, you do. I'm trusting you. You want to comment on that? Well, I don't know that I could say that, say that any better than you just said it, and, uh, but darkness is real, mm -hmm. light is also real, Right. and uh, the evil one wants to eat your soul, and we have to make a choice within our free will to thought, to look, to ask God to show us the light. And, uh, and it's really what what these three or four chapters are talking about is just your thought process is off and because your thought process is off how you feel how you understand what's going on around you is off and the only self-correction that you can have is in your prayer life to ask for mercy and grace right. and help yeah. So as we're talking about getting hope, let's read a couple more verses. Verse uh, 17, the last phrase says, uh, I'll appoint peace as your overseer, righteousness as your taskmaster. Violence shall no more be heard in your land, devastation and destruction within your borders. You shall call your walls salvation and your gates praise. Uh, to me, uh, 
in the midst of difficult times when we turn to the Lord, God says, I'm going to give you peace in the midst of that. Uh, just a little side note on me. There was several years ago, I was going through a really difficult time. Wasn't sleeping, was very troubled. And I pulled out the Psalms. And uh, it was late at night, and I was just reading. And I read one Psalm, and I prayed it back. And I read another Psalm, and I would pray it back. And then finally, in the midst of, of, of a really troubled time, uh, God brought me insight, and He brought me peace. He brought me His thoughts. And I was able to get up and go to bed and sleep and get up the next morning and I knew his will. Uh, you're, you're smiling. You've been there oh, before, haven't oh, you? A lot. Yeah. And, uh, he is the Prince of Peace and there's really, if he is in your life, you should be expecting that. And, you know, uh, it's incredible. And basically you just identified right. one of the moments in your life that right. you know that God is real. Right. Because that doesn't happen on its own. No, it doesn't. There is an internal peace that defies definition. Right. Why we're studying Isaiah uh, is because I, Isaiah resonates a lot with me as I think about the current time we're living in. One of the things Isaiah tells me is there are people of God who have loved him who have gone through this kind of stuff before and God had a word for them then he has a word for us now and part of that is judgment's real God you can't live apart from God and have a good life uh, and the other part is is there's hope in the midst of even the darkness God is shining his light he's bringing his mercy to his people. You want to have the final word on that, Rudy? Well, <clears throat> that analogy is right on. I think part of the problem that we have in the world today is that we, we kind of follow science. The fact is that God's the one that anointed men and women with a gifting to be able to work on the problems of the world, right. medicine, geology, and climate sure. change, and all that stuff, and medicine. Uh, but when we use his gifting wrongly, we tear down. Sure. But when we use his gifting rightly, it builds up. Right. So as you look at your own life, you can see this dichotomy. If you're a leader, you know very well that you can crush the people you're leading. Right. And you also know when you have a mind to build them up, how you can build them up. And that's an example of using a gifting upside down or right side up. Yeah. And um, yeah. it, 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 it becomes a point of self-correction for me when I have see myself in the third person using a gift improperly. Yeah, that is so true. Hey, thank you so much for being with us today. God bless you. We will see you tomorrow. You have a great day.